Do parties, executions, and overeating clog your daily schedule? If so, you're either a character in a George R. R. Martin book or the supreme leader of North Korea. Kim Jong-un certainly knows how to take full advantage of having an entire country under his boot. And while many would certainly like to see him suffer the fate of most Game of Thrones characters, I can't help but marvel at his opulent lifestyle. At least as far as we know of it. You'd be surprised how meticulously the dear leader of DPRK hides his day-to-day -day life. But of course, with a target on his back from almost every major intelligence agency worldwide, that's hardly a surprise. Still, with some in-depth research, I managed to compose a rough estimate of how one day of the North Korean leader goes. Good morning, Kim. Unlike most world leaders, Kim Jong-un doesn't have a particular waking hour. Instead, according to some sources, he has insomnia, preventing him from having a good night's sleep. I'm inclined to believe those sources, as insomnia is often the result of a troubled mind eaten by guilt. Moreover, this unpleasant illness is reinforced by some unhealthy habits, like constantly overeating and alcoholism. Knowing how Kim loves eating, drinking, and executing, that diagnosis seems like it's not too far from the truth. According to some Koreans who managed to run away from Kim's regime, the dear leader has been highly paranoid that he would be assassinated during his sleep, so it's not unreasonable to think he might have severe insomnia. What can I say? Throwing your uncle at a pack of starving dogs and torturing an entire nation does tend to leave a mark on your psyche. Finally, Kim's waking hour depends on the amount of alcohol he consumed the previous night, and oh boy, does Kimmy love his booze. Naturally, starting the day like this makes his entire schedule chaotic, which is awesome for his security, but a true nightmare for everyone else. Breakfast is served. The dear leader is well known for his love of food. Some say that he is forced by the party to overeat so he would look fat. In North Korean culture, that's a symbol of success and prestige. So a skinny, healthy-looking dude can never be on top of the food chain. Thus, Kim has to keep consuming calories in order to appear wealthy in front of his subjects. Unfortunately for the Korean propaganda, that's not how physics works. Since Kim Jong-un can't just shoot it from a cannon as he does with most of his other problems, he actually suffers from severe obesity. Some sources claim that the dear leader even developed gout because of his affinity toward unhealthy foods and drinks. That, however, doesn't stop him from gorging on industrial amounts of cheese. If only Kim loved his subjects as much as he loves cheese, then he would actually give some money for their betterment. But instead, this money goes for copious amounts of Emmental. Kim developed a taste for this particular kind of cheese when he studied in Switzerland under a false name. Let's look at the positive side, though. He might have fallen in love with Ipois de Bourgogne and stunk up the entire Korean peninsula to high heaven with its pungent smell. To compensate for the lack of sleep, Kim Jong-un is well known for drinking a lot of high-quality Brazilian coffee. Some estimates suggest the dear leader spends upwards of $1 million for his beloved coffee annually. Morning exercises. <laughs> of course, that's a joke. Can you imagine the 300-pound alcoholic ever lifting anything heavier than a bottle of whiskey? Unlike most other world leaders, Kim looks down on the idea he could improve. After all, his subjects perceive him as a god, and it's possible he believed them. Still, I'm not entirely familiar with all theological questions, but I doubt there is another god out there with diabetes, high blood pressure, several STDs, and even more psychological problems. But hey, I also don't poison my brothers with radioactive agents at foreign airports. So what do I know? To reinforce the belief he is actually a god, or just because he loves this ultra-luxurious and lavish lifestyle, Kim actually has a team of high-class scientists who have the sole mission of prolonging his life as much as possible. I truly hope that's just as true as Koreans' belief that their leader never uses the toilet. According to Juche, the Kim family is too pure to use the toilets. Instead, they are so devoted and hard-working to help the Korean people prosper 
that they burn all their energy, and there is simply no waste. While I highly doubt this superstition, it would certainly explain his bloated figure and inner hatred. I guess we can attribute all of that to him never taking a proper poop. Kim's Day After stuffing himself like a Thanksgiving turkey, the dear leader is ready to meet the masses. And by that I mean he's ready to be the main character in a strictly directed scenario which aims to persuade North Korean society that Kim actually cares about them. That, however, is highly unlikely, as about 24% of the annual budget of DPRK is spent on the people that ensure he will stay in power, the military, and another 30% is spent entirely on him and his inner circle. Moreover, while each of his meals is a banquet on its own, his people are well known for eating grass and insects to survive. Still, Kim needs to keep up this charade, and he does it splendidly. Smiling, waving, taking group pictures and occasionally kissing a baby. Not really the proletariat's understanding of labor, but would you dare to complain if you and your entire family will get a one-way ticket to a concentration camp? Still, the dear leader knows very well that he's not so dear to all. That's why he spends millions of dollars on his personal security. He is always surrounded by bodyguards who go through a meticulous selection. They are all weapon experts, highly trained combatants, and martial artists. However, that's not enough to get this honorable position. You also need to be shorter than 5 foot 5, so you won't be higher than the supreme leader. Naturally, Kim doesn't travel by horse, but rather by an exceptionally luxurious Mercedes-Benz Maybach S6000. The armored car is worth more than $1.6 million and, without a doubt, is the most luxurious vehicle in North Korea. Yes, the dear leader has a thing for Western cars. As in his garage, there is also a Mercedes S62 worth more than $500,000, an Audi R8, a Range Rover Sport, and a Rolls-Royce Phantom. So, take that, you capitalist swine. <laughs> if you think that Kim is paranoid about having a target on his back, you're not too far out of line. The North Korean leader travels by three identical planes, IL-62. Based on the few photos spread through the state-run media, the interior of these planes can easily exceed $1 million each. Still, nothing beats his 200-foot-long yacht. Dennis Rodman, one of the dear leader's high-profile friends, compared the vessel with a cross between a ferry and a Disney cruise ship. So you can imagine what's on board this ultra-luxurious marine gem. Actual work Running a country is not all pageantry, so the dear leader has to make some decisions on how to lead. Typically, his advisors take care of most things, but Kim has the final word. He is infamous for his death sentences. The UN has counted more than 340 executions since Kim took power from his father, and those are only the ones with official sentences. Another favorite topic of dear leader is the country's nuclear program. Although placed under sanctions, the DPRK still continues to test missiles. No one really knows who supplies him with the needed parts. After work After a long day of being a thorn in the entire world's butts, Kim finally gets home. And let me tell you, he doesn't live in an adobe cottage on the outskirts of Samjian. Instead, Kim lives in 20 ultra-luxurious palaces all across the country. His primary residence, however, is Ryongsang. The 4.6 square miles large palace has everything one could desire. The interior is kept secret for security reasons, of course. And not because it's just as expensive as the entire city of Pyongyang. Still, some defectors who worked in the palace claim that the inside of the palace can only be described as mesmerizing. It has an Olympic-sized swimming pool that rarely gets used by Kim, a shooting range where from time to time the targets are not as inanimate as they should be, and a massive private cinema where Kim likes to watch NBA games. Take that, America. Night. 
That's when Kim can actually kick back and relax while enjoying his lovely wife and kids. Instead, the deer leader actually spends his nights partying, whilst wasting hundreds of millions of dollars on pleasures like food, booze, and women. Can you picture this guy with a funny hairdo being a womanizer? Of course you can't. That's why he relies on sex slaves. Okay, they're not literally sex slaves, although they don't actually have a choice. But still, once the deer leader discards them, they are allowed to marry a high-ranking official ensuring them a comfortable life with some amenities not everyone in North Korea can enjoy. Still, to the broad North Korean public, Kim Jong-un is a modest family man with a beautiful wife and three children. His wife, Ri Sol-ju, is actually quite charming and recently started showing much more besides the dear leader at various events. Coincidentally, that somehow corresponded with the time the fake Western news who always tried to tarnish Kim's reputation for no reason, started insinuating that he spends most of his nights gorging on expensive foods, drinking excessively, and partying on his private pleasure island. Inner sources claim that the Kim administration spends over $30 million annually on expensive alcohol, his poison of choice being champagne, wine, and whiskey. Unfortunately for the Supreme Leader, the luxury goods ban on North Korea meant he would have to get some other spirits into the mix. So now he spends about $170,000 on premium Russian vodka. On the side, he has Danish pork, Iranian caviar, Kobe beef, and, of course, a lot of cheese. Smoking is another one of his many, many, many sins. Naturally, he doesn't smoke just any cigarettes. According to several sources, a pack of his cigarettes costs approximately $44. Now that's what I call getting lung cancer with style. Falling asleep Since the dear leader has more than one problem with his health, he's not just putting on his jammies and falling asleep. Instead, he almost always is passed out drunk. Some defectors, whose words, in all honesty, should be taken with a grain of salt, claim that Kim can no longer fall asleep without drinking liver-bursting amounts of alcohol beforehand. Whether that's true or not, only God knows. And Dennis Rodman, I guess. As you can see, being the all-powerful leader of a country is not all fun and games. Although looking at Kim's lifestyle, fun and games truly have a huge role in his day-to-day -day life. Still, I'd prefer to rule over the good old USA. So, if you wonder how our dear leader spends his days, check out this video.